needs to speak to the bills before the House. Thank you, Madam Deputy President. For too long, successive coalition and Labor governments have held the people of New South Wales and the people of Australia in contempt. For too long, so-called honourable members of the major parties have colluded and connived to defraud and deceive the public. For too long, rich miners, multinational companies and political insiders have held sway over our democracy and corrupted the decisions of our government. Mr. Madam Deputy President, the people have been shocked and appalled by the revelations that have come out of the, of the Independent Commission Against Corruption in Operations Acacia and Jasper, and now they are angry. They are angry because their faith in politicians, <coughs> their faith in the Labor, Liberal and National parties is crumbling as, crumbling as the shonks and shysters that, that run this place are exposed. In my hometown of Orange and across New South Wales, I am regularly stopped in the street by people who are sickened to the core by what they are witnessing, and the question of one man last week sums up the sentiment when he said to me, when will these bastards go to jail? Madam Deputy President, the time is long overdue for the New South Wales Government to stamp out the disreputable, unethical and unscrupulous conduct which has dominated our political landscape and for the people to take back their government from the rich and the powerful. It is time for the government to hear the calls for transparency and accountability and start making decisions in the interests of the people of New South Wales. No one's listening, mate. But Madam Deputy President, it is clear that this message is, has not been heard. And I'll acknowledge the interjection of Honourable Noel Blair, who said, No one is listening. That's right. As I said, as I just said, the message has not been heard because you are not listening. How can the public have any faith in this government's commitment to stamp out corruption when they have completely failed to implement the majority of recommendations in two scathing ICAC reports into corruption? While the Greens support the criminal assets recovery legislation currently before the House, it is shocking that the former Premier Barry O'Farrell claimed that this, and I will quote, completes the government's legislative responses to the recommendations of the Independent Commission Against Corruption. M Madam Deputy Speaker, let me read to you President, some of the recommendations. Madam speaker, Deputy uh, President, no, no, let me read to you some of the recommendations of the ICAC which the government has failed to implement. That the New South Wales government enacts legislation to pro provide for the regulation of lobbyists, including the establishment and management of new lobbyists. Fail. That, the, that this register be overseen by an independent authority. Fail. That the New South Wales Premier develops a model policy and procedures for adoption by all departments, agencies and ministerial officers concerning the conduct of meetings with lobbyists, the making of records of these meetings and the making of records of telephone conversations. Fail. That the New South Wales point Government amends the definition of open... The Minister on a point of order. Look, I've I'm trying to give him a little bit of latitude, uh, Madam Deputy President, but this goes nowhere within the long title of this bill. If this member wants to talk about possible other bills or other areas, that's a matter for another day. But we're dealing with these two cognate bills, and I'd ask him to draw him back to the relevancy of these cognate bills. Yes, I uphold the. I'm ready to rule on the. That's because you haven't heard from me. Well, oh, he doesn't need to. He doesn't need to. Are you actually going to vote? He doesn't need to. I'm seeking to be heard on the point of order before you rule. That's perfectly within. You're a bit uh, late. Uh, order. I, I will allow Mr. Shoebridge to make a comment on the point of order. Um, th thank you, thank you, Madam, um, Madam, Madam Chair. The um, the question here is about whether or not uh, Mr. Buckingham's contribution about the inadequacy of the response to the ICAC recommendations of corruption is within the, the is generally relevant to this bill. This bill is all about. Uh, one of ICAC's response to a history of appalling corruption in New South Wales, and it is clearly relevant. They may, members opposite may not, may not want it to be read onto the record, but the, the other recommendations to deal with corruption and the limited nature of this bill is clearly relevant to the second reading contribution. Uh, and, and, and I would suggest that the, um, the, the point of order is designed 
to interfere with the debate and to limit what, what is a reasonable contribution in a democratic debate. You've taken up 30 minutes. minutes. I uphold the point of order moved by the Minister and ask that the member keep his comments to the bills before the House. That all agencies, thank you, Madam Deputy President, that all agencies subject to the operation of the Government Information Public Access Act 2009 proactively release lobbying information for which there is no overriding public interest against disclosure, including by publishing that information on their websites. Failed. Did it appear in these bills? No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Order. Uh, the Honourable Noel Blair on a point of order. Uh, Madam Deputy President, the, the member is now flouting your previous ruling and has returned straight back to the area where he has now been ruled to be not being relevant and continuing on down the path in which you've just made the previous ruling. I ask you to draw him back to the bill. I uphold the point of order. The member needs to um, make his comments to the bills before the House, and if he continues um, to behave in this manner, I will call him to order. Thank you, Madam Deputy President. That the New South Wales Government develops a new code point of conduct order. for lobbyists. The point of order. Uh, Minister on a point of order. The member is not only flouting your previous have two you, rulings, not only is he flouting and now interrupting me, you. Madam, but Order. You know, I acknowledge for the record the comments made by the Honourable David Shoebridge, and I quote, go for it, close quote, and that's what he's doing. He's going for it, and I ask that you tell him and call him to order. To the point of order, and I'd ask Mr. To David Shoebridge, because this is, uh, I, I never made those comments. Uh, I never made those comments, and I'd ask that the Honourable John Ajaka withdraw them. It's simply untrue. And 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 and, and my colleague, uh, Mr. Jeremy Buckingham's comments are clearly relevant to the issue of corruption, which is what this bill is dealing with. To the, to the point of order, the uh, Honourable Catherine Cusack. And I would just like to preface my remarks by saying how grossly offended I am by the remarks of this member and the aspersions he's casting. The, the scope of this bill is clear in the, uh, in the title of the bill. Uh, it's very specific. It's a matter that all members of this House have been agreeing on and looking forward to seeing happen. The member is canvassing issues currently before ICAC in breach of all of the conventions. Oh, he's trashing the standing orders of this House in the way he is trashing the reputations of MPs in both places. And in the name of standards, his behaviour uh, in continuing to show contempt for your rulings is an utter disgrace. And I ask you to call him to order, and, and, the, and the best way forward in this is for him to adhere to the standing orders that require him to stick to the topic in the bill from which he is straying in order to defame other people. I, order. I uphold once again. I call the Honourable Jeremy Buckingham to order for the first time and once again remind him that I have ruled on many occasions so far in his contribution that what he is saying uh, prior to the point of order being raised by the Minister was not relevant to the bill. He needs to make his comments in relation to the bills before the House. Thank you, Madam Deputy President. What is not in these bills? These bills are responses to the ICAC inquiries. These bills are the government's, as the, the minister has said in his second reading speech, as the former premier said, Madam Deputy President, that this was the government's legislative response to Operation Jasper and Acacia. And the recommendations that are not in this bill are pertinent and relevant to the people of New South Wales. You think that you might be half smart and run a bit of interference in here, but out in the, out in the public, out in the community, you're a rotten disgrace. So I, I have no... The Honourable Nile Blair on a point of order. Uh, the member knows that he must direct all of his comments through the chair and not cast aspersions on members opposite. Also on the point of order. The uh, Minister on the point of order or a new point of order? On the point of, well, maybe a new point of order, minister? but I take great offence to being called a do, uh, rotten, dirty scoundrel by this member. Now, to the, point of order. the Honourable Catherine Cusack to you the point of order. You have just ruled that this member must stay within the leave of this bill. Oh. The very first words out of his mouth were, and the issues that are not in this bill, and on he went from there. Now, if there has ever been a contempt of a president's ruling, that has to be as clear cut as it gets. I uphold the points of order. Once again, remind the, uh, Mr Jeremy Buckingham that he needs to speak to the bills before the House. Madam Mr President. Uh, the uh, Minister. I demand that he now withdraw the comments made against me and apologise. I, um, 
I actually didn't hear him say those words, and so for that reason, I can't ask him to withdraw. But he does need to tread very carefully. What the people of New South Wales are demanding is that the definition of lobbyists be expanded to include all industry peak bodies, trade unions, employer bodies, and most religious and charitable bodies to, uh, to register. In addition, uh, all corporations that lobby are uh, to use um, by use of their own in-house staff, including board members. On all of these issues, the government has not responded uh, appropriately, has not implemented and not implemented uh, the recommendations of ICAC, and it's a fail, 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 fail. This is an abysmal record, record in fighting corruption. And if the new Premier is serious about being the worst nightmare, I quote, of corruption Order. politicians Order. and dodgy Order. donors, then it is time he seriously reassessed the former Order. Premier's Order. plans to be done. Mr Jeremy Buckingham will resume his seat. The Honourable Member, Catherine Hughes, on a point of order. He's not only showing disrespect to the chair, he's showing disrespect to this entire chamber. You it is an appalling display of making no order when he has been repeatedly told to conform oh, to the leave of the bill. Now, the member, I would challenge him to tell us which provision in the bill he is referring to. He will not be able to do that. He is defying your ruling and he is defying the House. And I ask you again to call him to an order and to insist he stay within the leave of the bill. Yes, once again I uphold the point of order. The member needs to stay within the bills being debated before the House. Thank you, Madam Deputy President. Now, Madam Deputy President, I come to the specifics of the cognate bills before the House. The Greens are very concerned that the Mining and Petroleum Legislation Amendment Bill removes the public interest test that was only introduced at the end of last year and, in doing so, significantly reduces the power of the Minister with respect to cancelling mining and petroleum licences. It is clearly appropriate that the Minister can take into account the public interest when assessing the ongoing appropriateness of licences for an activity which caused significant disruption to our land, water and climate and the Greens will bring amendments to retain this provision. This test does not force the Minister to act in the public interest, but gives the Minister the, flex the flexibility to cancel a licence if there is new information regarding the public interest which comes to light. In fact, there are numerous instances currently where it would be appropriate for the Minister to use this power, and I wish to draw the attention of the House to three of these. Bentley. Outside Lismore clearly does not have the support of the local community, and the key demand there is that the minister uh, enact the public interest test and cancel those licences. Karuna and Shinwa on the Liverpool Plains, the most fertile and productive agricultural land in the state, some of the best climate in the state for growing our food. Uh, the, the community there wants the minister to implement the, the public interest test, use their discretion and cancel those licences. Wallara too and the Illawarra, mining and drinking water catchments. These areas should be protected. The Sydney Catchment Authority has a requirement that an activity is either neutral or beneficial to the area. Clearly, mining fails this test, and having a public interest test that allows the minister the discretion to put the interest of the community before those of miners is of enormous value to any statute. I would request that in his speech and reply that the minister makes it clear exactly where it is that the Independent Commission Against Corruption recommended a reduction in the ability of a minister to make a decision in the public interest. And I challenge the Minister to, to provide that in anything that the ICAC has said, because it is not there. This diminishes the power of the state and reduces the public interest. Having said this, Madam Deputy President, the Greens do support the establishment of a fit and proper person test, which allows the Minister to cancel or ref to refuse to grant or renew a mining right or petroleum authority if, in the Minister's opinion, the applicant is not a fit and proper person. There is a non-exhaustive list of factors which the decision-maker may take into account, including whether the person or company has contravened relevant legislation, is of good repute, has a history of bankruptcy or in involvement in management of insolvent companies. It also includes the involvement of persons who are not fit and proper persons in the management or of mining or petroleum companies. This is an entirely appropriate test which, if rigorously applied by the Minister to all existing and future licences, would go some way to restoring confidence in the current process. 
I would request that in his speech and reply that the minister makes it clear whether the government intends to look into all existing licence holders to ensure that they meet this new test and assures the parliament that the minister will not have no hesitation in cancelling a mining or petroleum licence if there is any hint that the licence holder or management are not fit or proper persons. I also note that there are consequential amendments in this bill which cancel parts of the currently unproclaimed Mining Amendment Act 2008, which relate to compliance with environmental legislation as this is now covered as a factor to be taken into account in the fit and proper person test. Could the Minister, in reply, please explain to the House why it is that the Mining Amendment Act 2008 has never been proclaimed and if the government intends to ask the Governor to do so? The Greens strongly support the Criminal Assets Recovery Amendment Bill 2014 as it enacts the ICAC recommendations that the New South Wales Government considers enacting legislation to provide for the confiscation of the proceeds of the, con of the conduct at issue obtained by those involved in or with knowledge of that conduct. This bill makes it possible to recover proceeds of crime where those proceeds were derived by a person who was not the direct perpetrator of the criminal activity or even if the proceeds were not derived at the direction or request of that perpetrator. Clearly, clearly an issue out of um, the ICAC investigation that is um, uh, needed in New South Wales and uh, required uh, in, in our statutes. This means that all situations where the perpetrator knew or ought to have reasonably known that the secondary person would derive a financial benefit are covered and is a sensible amendment to the current Act. But there are other sensible amendments that are required to these current Acts. The Greens will be pushing uh, and, and, and proposing those amendments here and continuing to lobby in the community uh, and raise the issue of what is missing from uh, the, this uh, amendment, these reforms, because there is a list uh, as long as your arm of, of recommendations that ICAC has made that will clean up politics. And if ever there was a, an institution, in, uh, there was a body in, the, uh, in New South Wales uh, that would need to clean up uh, and, and a guard against corruption, it is the coalition. They are before the ICAC in a way that is uh, um, uh, appalling to the people of New South Wales. They might not like it. They might want to run interference on my speech because I'm saying that the ICAC has recommended other things to do. But you should have a look at yourselves. You should have a look at where the rot in this state started and you'll find it very close to home. That's right. Well, we Order. The Honourable Jeremy Buckingham, Mr Jeremy Buckingham will resume his seat.